this is uh, this actor was in my favorite Star Trek episode ever, uh, which is a piece of the action, um, and it's Anthony Caruso who played Bella Oxmix, who's kind of the mob boss. Um, the plot of that one is they go to this planet that's a hundred years ago. The ship that came before left this book about mobs of the of Chicago, and they took it as like a Bible, and they changed their whole society to match the mobs of Chicago. Uh, and Bella Oxmix is one of the mob bosses who's, uh, you know, fighting other mobs, basically. Um, but what can you tell us about uh, Anthony Caruso? Well, he, one thing, we asked him if he had any humorous story to tell about in the, working in the films. It's not a bear story. It's not a bear story. <laughs> it's a lion story. Oh. He, he was uh, in an episode of uh, Circus Boy, a TV series. Oh, with he, Mickey Dolenz. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he played a, a, a lion tamer. Tra t yeah, lion, lion tamer. tamer. And uh, he does, the lion trainer is over there playing with the lion. He's a big, young lion, but a big lion. And he was young, he, just a cub. And uh, he, the trainer was wrestling with him and getting the lion kind of warm. And so when it came time to do the scene, uh, Anthony Caruso played a, a lion tamer who uh, was brave. And then he, uh, something happens where he loses his courage and then he gains his courage back. Uh, in one scene, the lion, lion is supposed to attack him. And uh, so before they, they start filming, the lion, you know, comes and puts, puts his paws on both of his shoulders. And then when they said film, they kind of pushed Anthony Caruso. So after Anthony Caruso fell, the lion goes on top of him, which looks like he's attacking him. He's a, and the lion starts pulling him under, under, under him, and uh, wants to play. And he starts, he starts humping, and uh, <laughs> he starts and licking him in the face and all that. And Anthony Caruso says, "Get out! Get, get, get the lion out of here! Get the lion out of here! He, he's humping me! He, he's trying to hump me!" And the trainer says, "Well, kick him! Kick him!" And Anthony Caruso says, "No! I'm not going to do anything like that! Kick this lion!" So the lion. Uh, trainer came over and pulled the line off. Uh, the Caruso said, "Well, he wasn't, uh, you know, he, he wasn't being hurt. The line was playing with him. It was kind of <laughs> him and everything." He said, "But that's his only actor in Hollywood who got screwed by a lion tail. Uh, so, <laughs> late, late by a lion tail." <laughs> <laughs> then, um, yeah, he he, uh, he played uh, Indians, Mexicans, uh, gangsters. Yeah, his parents were from Italy. But he, of all the, he, he played a lot of gangsters. But of all the, of the series, The Untouchables, which was based on gangsters, he only had one episode out of a, what seven or eight years. But uh, he's <laughs> among his favorites were the crowd, the the scrunzy characters he played on Gunsmoke. Yeah, he 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 loved those. And he, he enjoyed that Star Trek episode too. And uh, I like to read something. I don't need to like reading, but uh, you say you know, that as if we're against reading. Like uh, you know, uh, uh, book learning. Uh. <laughs> we, we we asked him uh, if he can talk about the difference differences between the movies back then and the movies now. What, what he thinks about it. And he just quickly said, "I think the older movies." had a lot more substance. I think they had a lot more story. And you get your sex without having to show it. And when you showed someone getting shot, you didn't have the bl uh, belly blown and blowing up, out. And in reference to the horror film, he said they usually rely on suspense more than they do on gore. Yeah, that's a very good observation, I think. Excellent. Yeah, yeah well, I, I, I think of, um... Whenever, whenever those, that subject comes up, I think of the uh, the Hitchcock movie To Catch a Thief, where there's this amazing shot of Grace Kelly in the dark, and Cary Grant walks in, and there's a light that comes from the doorway, and you can see her diamond necklace she's wearing, and that's it. Like, she's, she's mostly in dark. And he comes over, and he reaches her, and they kiss, and they fall out of the frame, and then all these fireworks go off through the window, and that's all you needed. You know I mean, what I mean? Like, no, you yeah. knew what was going on, and that was fine. It told the story, you know. Yeah. Um, and and the same thing with violence. The same exact thing, you know. If there's a 
a, a, a gunfight or something, someone get like someone gets shot and then they fall out a window or they fall out of frame or, or you know they clutch their chest and they fall over and that's we, did it. we got it. Yeah. yeah. Well, like like yeah. I, an actor named John Doucette, uh told us that he saw a French film once. These were this man and woman are together. They're up in the hayloft, and the the, the the picture fades, goes to black, and it fades back in, and he reaches over and pulls a, 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 a piece of hay out of her hair, and he said that was all that was necessary. Yeah. Like Clark Gable, Clark, gone with Clark the Gable picking up Scarlett O'Hara and going behind the going into the room and slamming the door behind him. Next. We're done. Yeah. 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 Um, are we good with with uh, with? Uh, yeah, he had a long, yeah, yeah, he had a long, he had a very long career, and he he enjoyed doing both uh, film and stage. And he was honorary uh, uh, mayor of uh, Brentwood. Brentwood. Brentwood, honorary mayor of Brentwood. Yeah, and he worked on the uh, SAG board of directors for a number of years. Oh, wow, very cool. Um, okay, uh, Jeff Corey. Uh, he was in the Cloud Miners and. Uh, the Cloud Miners was a very interesting episode. I guess they're all interesting. I mean, it's Star Trek. <laughs> um, but the Cloud Miners uh, was about society um, and and uh, class classes, uh, where the privileged rich people live up in the sky, and everyone else lives on the planet in these horrible conditions, uh, and and basically do all the work to provide for the people up in the sky. Um, so uh, Jeff Corey plays sort of like the president of the rich, privileged people, uh, and uh, you, you—he's very pleasant and he's very nice. And then as that onion sort of gets peeled back, you realize he's not a very good dude. But he—but it's not—but it's hereditary. I mean, he, his parents were like that. His parents' parents were like—you know—it's just he's going through the legacy of everything he knows. But as an outsider, you know, Kirk and Spock are like, "Whoa, this guy's." you know, bad news, sort of. Uh, so, very interesting episode, and he was very good in it, uh, but he was a bad guy <laughs> in, in the episode. <laughs> he played some bad, once again, he played some bad people, but when he was a kid growing up, he loved going to the movies, uh, and then him and his friends would get together and play games based on the movies. He said if it was Douglas Fairbanks, it would be Thief of Baghdad, or he, he said he was a skinny kid, but he'd see Charles Lawton and Henry VIII, he'd go walking along like he's pretending like he's Charles Lawton. Uh, he said that th there's a lot of fantasy and a lot of make-believe. And uh, it, he went to summer camp once and uh, they did a, the kids there put on a play and he got chosen to be the lead in a melodrama. And he said, I remember the first night going on and being blinded by the footlights. He said, but it was a glorious kind of being blinded. And um, it, what did he say? It it, 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 um, it was the uh, the feeling of the magic of the make believe once again. It was a very exciting experience and a fulfilling experience. And uh, you you want to say something about where he grew up? Yeah. Uh, I, once again, I like to read it because it, he he worked it very beautifully, better than I I could have and. Uh, it's New it's York. A whole, it's a whole different picture of, of New York. Of New York. Of course, it's a whole different City. era. It was back in a time when the world wasn't as crazy as it is today. Yeah. I grew up on the tree lined street in a place that looked like the middle of, Amer of America. But actually, it was in Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> they were wonderful framed houses. Some of them elegant homes with catapults. Catapult trees? Catapult trees, yeah. Catapult trees and poplar, and everyone seemed to have a blackberries in their backyard, a lot of bushes <laughs> and so forth. Hydrangeas grew up in the front yard. It was a very sweet place with no crime. It was an event when an automobile came down the street, and later when airplanes came, it was astonishing. I remember the Armistice Day Parade on Fifth Avenue in New York in 1918. I was a very young boy. It was a very safe and pleasant community, and I, and I knew everyone on every street nearby. Not only the kids I played with, but I knew their grandparents and their aunts and uncles. It was a different time, it was a different type of life before radio was popular. 
you could hear the old people talking about the old days. Oh, yeah, it was whole, very nice. A whole different era, a whole different era. Yeah, before radio, even. Yeah. Wow. And even then, the old people were talking about the old days. So they're yeah, like... Yeah. Well, yeah, Bing, Bing Russell, another actor we knew, he told us that when he used to work on Gunsmoke, he said Glenn Strange, who was a, who acted back in the 1930s and, and back in those... In, started back in the 30s he would sit around and talk about the good old days he said and now i'm sitting around talking about the good old days he said and down the line my son kurt russell will be talking about the good old days it's, you know it's um it's always the good old days you're talking about the good old days and they're not even our good old days they're your good old days so you know <laughs> by the way just a trivia since you mentioned bing russell matthew do you know what movie bing russell was in uh, I'm gonna say um, I'm gonna say cowbells. Nope. Good uh, guess. Teenage gonna... Thunder. What? Teenage Thunder. Oh no, really? He was the car salesman that Johnny goes and rips the car off of. Yeah, that's actually a memorable character in that movie. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and he was only in that one scene, but it was a, yeah, it was. Yeah. He was like. One of the few people with that in that movie that like it was credible. Incredible. <laughs> and he got have, have either one of you of seen like, the old John have either one of you seen the old John Wayne movie True Grit? Oh really? He's in the original True Grit? Have you seen the True Grit? The original? I have. I've seen them both. Okay, okay. In the original one, uh the character of Tom Cheney, that was Jeff Corey, who we were talking about. Um he's the one that kills Kim Darby's uh father uh, mm. who was played by a guy another guy that we knew we interviewed john picard but uh he played such a nasty character he said that one year he did true grit butch cassidy and sundance kid and little big man three of the big successes oh, of that year of course, little and, big man that's right yeah he, he played wild bill hickok uh wow. and uh in that one and uh he's a that was a great year for him. He had, he had a, a great career, but uh, in the early 1950s, his career kind of came to a slump and uh, he was out of work for nine or 10 years. During that time, he taught acting. Uh, he taught acting and he said some of the people that came out of the people, well, the ones he taught were people like Jack Nichol Nicholson and wow. Sally wow. Kellerman and some of them. And then in 19, around 1960 or so, his career picked up again and uh, he went on from there. He even got to play King Lear on stage. He said it was one of the, Play parts he always wanted to play, and he finally got to do it, and it and it came off really good. Uh, oh, so cool. Long career, it's very successful. Uh, even though he had that ten years of lack of work, uh, he uh, uh, he had great uh, career of teaching and helping others. He's of others, and, and uh, he said something that was very interesting to me, and that was he liked playing villains and r bad people because he felt like people who truly had those qualities in real life might see him and change their ways. Oh, that was wow. his way of looking at it, which I thought was real interesting. Yeah. yeah, that's a good motivation. That's how you would play that person honestly, right? And then, uh, and flawed. And so, yeah, somebody who could, who is that self-aware that could see their own flaws in that character and like, I might need to change.